Hello everybody, my name is James. The reason for today's project is that I'm actually working on something else and I found out I need some deep reach clamps. I went out and priced them and they're over 100 bucks for a good clamp that can reach about 12 inches. So I decided I would make my own. I've started here by kind of sketching out what I want uh, on my assembly table. This kind of gives me an idea of the scale and perspective. And what I built ended up being just about that, except I had a 12 inch reach. Now this is a perfect project for some off cuts because the widest board you need is really only about two and a half inches. And I've got lots of walnut off cuts, but nothing in oak, so I did go out and buy this one board. Now the reason I chose red oak for this project is because red oak has an extremely high modulus of elasticity. This measures the stiffness and resistance to bending, which is exactly what you want in a clamp. There are two other unique factors that make oak perfect for this project. The first is that it's cheap. You don't have to have FAS oak, you can actually get number two common, and you can end up picking that up sometimes for about $2 a board foot. And this whole project only takes about three board feet. The second reason, and this is pretty important, is that there was a study done in 2007 between Fine Woodworking and Case Western Reserve University. They tested different types of wood and six different types of glue to see what formed the strongest bond. And by far, the strongest bond created with the domestic wood was red oak with a type 1 PVA, which is what type bond 3 is. It had more than double the breaking strength of many other combinations. So needless to say, I was going to be expecting a lot from these clamps. And if you wait till the end, you might be surprised. Uh, I test them with a scale on video, and the results are pretty neat. Okay, back to what I'm doing. Uh, so far, I have ripped all of the wood into strips and glued it together in sections of three. And here I'm about to try to plane and joint everything square. You can start with four quarter stock, which is about three quarters of an inch thick. Then rip it down to a width that's the equivalent of about three times the thickness. And just square it up. After that, I'm just going to cut everything to length. This is kind of a behind the scenes look at a new crosscut sled that I am making. It will have features that no other crosscut sled does. And you want to pay close attention to this uh, no hands death zone. You want to stay away from that. I'm using finger joints here to hold the clamps together and I've got a little stop that's mounted to my outfeed table. Since that saw blade's so high, I want to make sure I'm not going to cut through the back. Obviously with such a tall piece, you're going to want to square it each time before you clamp it up. You want those cuts to be nice and perpendicular. And there's a preview of the two backs cut. I am making two clamps, so that is one for each clamp. Since I want these to fit very precisely, I'm going to go ahead and do a sample uh, on a piece of 2x4 and kind of test fit those together to make sure everything's perfect.
Okay, this actually looks perfect and I'm satisfied with that, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the oak now uh, to match it. marking the hole location so that I can tap the threads for the wooden screw. And just make sure you clamp this down tight before you try cutting those threads. And it really helps if you put some lubrication in there. Uh, basically the best thing that I found to use is tongue oil. It's very viscous so it doesn't tend to run and drip very much. Uh, and it really makes the threads cut very nicely. Using a really big dowel for the wooden threads, I'm actually going to cut the threads on that too. Uh, you could turn the dowel on a lathe. I got lazy and I went ahead and spent 10 bucks and bought a 3 foot long dowel at the store. When I was editing this video I could have swore it looked like that thing was going in crooked but it really is going in straight. If you haven't tapped threads before but you have worked with oak you might think oak is a bad wood for this but oak actually cuts really really well for threads. You can look in here and you can see that there's not a single tear out. It's a perfectly clean cut thread. For the dowel, however, you really kind of need to soak it overnight with oil. Seems I always try without it and I always get some tear out. But when I soak it overnight in oil, it works great. And that first two inches there is tear out because yesterday I was too lazy to soak it in oil and I thought I'd go ahead and try it and sure enough it chunked out. You can see the rest of it is cutting cleanly though. This is sped up at three speed by the way. And here is regular speed, so you can expect to invest a little bit of time to cut this. I think it probably took me 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes to cut through the whole three feet of dowel. Once I got to a certain point, I flipped the dowel around. I wrapped a towel around it so that I could clamp it down, put about three or four clamps on it, and I'm just finishing up tapping that side. Quick test to make sure that it works out. Since I don't want a glue failure, I am going to feed copious amounts of glue into this joint.
There, I think that is just about the right amount of glue. Yep. I put this squeeze clamp on reverse so that it doesn't close in while I'm putting pressure on the main one. Okay, we have to pack these wounds with massive amounts of sawdust to prevent hemorrhaging. Okay, maybe I was kidding there, but this actually has a really good function. Uh, every so often you have these joints that don't quite fit together perfectly, or at least you see little hairline gaps in them. If you do this now, before you clamp it down, any little gap that you might have had will be 100% invisible when your joint is complete. Try it and you'll see. Dang it, more glue is getting out. I had no idea it takes so many clamps just to build a clamp. Kind of makes you wonder how the first clamp was made. Okay, it's all dry and that looks like a nightmare to sand. It is rock hard, but I'm going to tell you a secret. So many people are afraid to go aggressive on their sandpaper when they start. Don't be. Just keep a light touch, but start with a very aggressive paper. This will take off a massive amount of material in a short period of time. I am using 36 grit paper on my belt sander. In a minute I'm going to switch to my disc sander and I'm going to start with 60 grit on that. It's going to clean up all the marks in just a couple of minutes from the belt sander and then I'll switch to 100, then 150, then 220. This entire clamp can literally be sanded in about 5 or 6 minutes if you go this route by starting very aggressive. Try to keep an eye on some of those finger joints as we go. You'll notice that there are no gaps in them, not even a hairline gap. Using that sawdust really makes a difference. So I had a 36 inch dowel. Luckily these clamps needed an 18 inch dowel and it worked out perfectly. I get two of them out of this. Just putting a little bevel right at the edge of the dowel where it's going to enter the wood. I could use the disc sander but I was too lazy to pull the sander out. This is that scrap walnut I was talking about. I'm going to use this to make the turning handles in order to tighten my clamp down. Mostly I just like drawing shapes on wood. I'm going to put a hole in each handle so that I can thread them down onto the top of the screw.
Walnut threads nicely too. And this is a one and a half inch tap, by the way. I used one and a half inch dowels. See, more drawing. You can use the bandsaw to cut out the handles, or a coping saw works nice too, even a jigsaw. Uh, anything will work for that. For the first five years I did woodworking, I couldn't afford a bandsaw. Uh, then for the next five years of uh, woodworking, I didn't have room for a bandsaw, so I got really, really good with my jigsaw. Hopefully you can kind of see the shape of what that uh, handle is coming to be now, and that's why I had to do all that drawing, of course. We use a 3 8 inch radius round over here. It gives the handle a really nice uh, rounded feel and makes it easier to grip. And you certainly don't need a router table. This is a perfect job for a palm router. Uh, I have one that I bought from Home Depot. It's a rigid palm router. Uh, it's a quarter inch shank and it works great. I think I paid about 90 bucks for it. Okay, so I'm going to attach the handle uh, to the end of the screw uh, with glue. Uh, it fits fairly snug anyway, but I'm going to put glue on both the handle uh, and, the, and the screw thread itself. I didn't do it here, but it would have been a good idea to just put a little bit of sawdust in with that glue. That way when you thread this handle on, it fits just a little bit tighter. It's not really super critical. Um, I'm actually going to drill all the way through here with a 5 16 inch uh, hole, and I'm going to put a, a dowel pin all the way through. I didn't let the glue dry before I drilled it, and so the glue has been burnt on the end of my uh, drill bit there, but it did clean off nicely. And remember, the best uh, course of action is when you're done putting glue, uh, just put a little bit more glue. And then beat that dowel in with your giant lignum vitae Thor's hammer. I thought I would go ahead and round the edges here a little bit. Uh, originally I was going to round the backs, but I decided not to because I didn't want to compromise any strength there. 
uh, but rounding at the very front here isn't going to take away from the strength and it makes it look a little bit nicer. Okay, this is the last time I'm going to draw on the wood. I think uh, three dowel pins going all the way through uh, these finger joints will really stiffen it up quite a bit and we're not going to rely 100% on glue, even though I think it is sufficient. Uh, this is going to give us a little bit of mechanical holding ability as well. And it allows me to give a nice design feature. I can use a walnut dowel for some contrasting color. And I decided to do a 3 8 inch radius round over to the whole piece. Here's that little palm router that I was talking about. I had to use that in order to get this part of the uh, uh, clamp routed. So I'm going to cut out some walnut discs uh, for the clamping pads. Walnut is a good wood for this because it's not too hard. It's not nearly as hard as red oak or maple. And you don't want anything that's too hard to be uh, your clamping surface that's going to go against uh, uh, your wood and potentially dent it. With these hole saws, I like to drill a little bit over halfway, uh, turn it over, uh, just relocate my hole, and drill the other half, then pull it out. It's always a lot easier to get the disc out that way. And for a couple of these, I have to put some holes all the way through them. They're going to fit over the end of the wooden screw, as you'll see here in just a minute. So I've got to put a slot in the end of the wooden screw. It's going to be a point where the uh, the clamping pad can kind of hang onto and spin freely. When the screw uh, gets screwed down into the object that you're clamping, you can't have the screw shaft turning against it because it's going to mar the wood. So it has to be sort of independent of the clamping pad and you'll see how I, I put that together. So it's pretty easy to make this cut on the table saw. We just set up the distance that we, we want. I've set my kerf here. Um, I do one cut, move the fence over about an eighth of an inch, do the second cut, and then I get a quarter inch wide uh, total width. And uh, it's easy to do that as long as the handle is not attached to this screw. Unfortunately, I was a dummy, and I went ahead and put the handle on the other screw already. So I have to come up with a different method to cut the slot on my other screw. So I had to move over to my really old router table uh, because it's the only table that I had in it that would carry a quarter inch shank bit. For some reason my, uh, my newer router table so I can't put a quarter inch shank bit. Anyway, quarter inch shank for a quarter inch cutter uh, raises it up to the right depth and just basically 
hovered over the position and rotated the screw through it and that did a good job as well. I imagine there's some other ways that this could be cut. If you're a crafty woodworker, you can probably come up with a, a number of ways. So I've got to glue these discs together and uh, they're a little bit rough on some of the surfaces since it was scrap wood so I just wanted to hit, touch them up on my uh, disc sander to make sure they're all perfectly flat so they'll glue together nicely. If you do this be really careful um, hold, the, hold it tightly uh, or maybe just play it safe and uh, sand them with a sanding block. And here I just need to glue the flat disc to the ring. Weights make fantastic clamps uh, for things like this. Uh, I've got this uh, solid block of steel here. It probably weighs 10 pounds. It's going to work for one of them. But for the other one, all I have is a block of aluminum, a tiny little block of steel, and a little piece of copper. So hopefully that'll do. So I need to sand down the end of the screw here so that it will fit inside of the clamping pad. But we don't want to sand too much. We want to leave a shoulder there so when the clamping pad is all built around it, it has something to hang on to so the clamping pad doesn't fall off. I'm going to use a very thin slice of oak in order to make a little discs uh, to hold the clamping pad onto that shoulder. Dang it, more drawing on wood, sorry. Got to make the hole size here so that it fits down nicely into that groove that we cut into the wooden screw, uh, but not so big that it will fall over that shoulder. I'm making three because I'm sure I'm going to screw one up. So if you don't have a bandsaw, I would not use a jigsaw here. A uh, coping saw is much better. Jigsaw is really too violent for this little one eighth uh, of an inch thick piece of wood. Okay, time to put it all together. This is the secret assembly method. Don't tell anybody how this works. All I actually do is just snap that little piece of uh, oak in half right along the grain because it will glue back together perfectly and you'll never notice the break. We're going to glue it back together and glue it to the walnut at the same time all in place. This is basically going to hold the clamping pad permanently onto the screw. So I'm going to kind of hold it in place and put some pressure on it uh, for a good half minute to a minute and that will allow the glue to bond enough where it can just sit and hang on its own and then I can use some tape as a clamp to uh, kind of tape it together. 
I did cut that oak disc just a little bit bigger uh, than the walnut itself. Uh, that way I can sand it down to be flush with the walnut when it's all said and done. And this actually has a considerable amount of strength. Uh, it takes quite a bit of force, or it will take quite a bit of force, uh, even to pry this off if it ever gets damaged, uh, because there's a lot of glue surface area. That oak is glued to the walnut all the way around. And our, under normal use, it will never uh, incur loading in that direction. All the loading will basically be the screw pushing straight down onto the flat three-quarter inch thick part of the walnut against our clamping surface. And we can see how it's going to spin freely in place. I'll allow the screw to turn and it will stay put. I thought I would mate this up uh, with a another uh, clamping pad at the bottom also with walnut just for looks really and here you get to see me using this clamp for the very first time it's going to actually clamp that pad down in place for me So we're sanding this up, and if you made it this far, uh, you got to stay tuned. I'm going to test this clamp on a scale here in just about three more minutes. So my favorite finish is lacquer. Uh, it's very easy. If you have a small project like this, you can buy a lacquer and a spray can. Uh, the nozzles for this are great. Uh, one thing never to forget, you must wear a respirator if you're using lacquer. It's very dangerous to not use a respirator. Okay, it's time. So I have a scale. Uh, the biggest scale that I could find is this one. It's a 550 pound scale. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I know Matthias Wandel, I don't know if you follow him on YouTube. He built a, a sort of a C-clamp, a deep reach C-clamp, and I think he tested his up to about 200 pounds. So we'll see what we can get out of this. So I'm going to use one of these clamps to hold the other one firmly in place. I think I'll put down a piece of plywood first, that way all four legs from the scale uh, can touch it. And then I'm going to put a piece of plywood on top of that to distribute the load uh, so that clamp doesn't uh, punch a hole through the scale. Um, not that it could, but just in case. And here we go. I'm going to have two cameras running. One's going to be focusing on the readout, and the other one we're just going to hold by hand. Okay, go. So we're very excited. Uh, the scale went to 564 pounds, uh, then went to error. And you can see I've got a square on the clamp there. On the back side, there's no deflection. On the inside, I've got a little bit less than 1 8th, uh, and that's about 2 thirds of the distance to the screw. Uh, so that's pretty good. After releasing the pressure, I'm just going to check and make sure, and it does look like uh, the clamp has returned to perfectly square. Uh, so that's fantastic. 
So we're very excited. Uh, the results are great. Sort of what I expected in reality. You know, a little bit of uh, science and uh, research went into this. Uh, getting the wood with the, the highest strength and uh, the best glue bond that we could. In fact, I have a feeling this clamp could probably uh, clamp a thousand pounds of pressure. So if you're out there ever watching my video, Matthias, uh, I'm ready for a clamp challenge. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe.